Hey, hey, what's up everybody? Ed the Palm Professor here coming to you from my office. And you know what that means? It is time for another design drawing. I got in touch with Luke over at Michigan Gardener. He grows some incredible plants, super, super knowledgeable, passionate about our planet, about creating unique environments for himself and his family, and also sharing all that information with all of his viewers around the world. <laughs> So what we are doing is I started talking to him a year ago, probably at this point, we started discussing a renovation of an existing pond. So he recently purchased a home and it had a pond on it, but the pond didn't function properly. So he didn't have any history. He didn't know who built it. He didn't really know the age of it. He just knew it was not functioning. Sent me a few pictures and I knew we'd be able to help him out. So what I want to do is I'm going to show you not the exact design of what we're going to be doing. I'm going to talk to you more about a conceptual design for Luke and his family. So here I have what we call our aquascape ecosystem. The aquascape ecosystem is a design concept and system for successful water feature projects. The beauty of it is once you understand the basis of this you'll be able to scale it up or down according to your designs. But the principles, the, the concepts, the underlying foundational science, all the information, how it functions is the same. A recent project I just did for Aquarium Info which you will be seeing shortly is a beautiful indoor aquarium system that is indoors and it's basically it's a small pond but all the stuff inside of it is exactly what we're going to be doing here the feature that we have in front of our office right here at aqualand half acre 12 feet deep it's the exact same thing the only difference is the pumps are bigger the boulders are bigger the liner is bigger and i think that's really what i want you to take away today is a good understanding of that basis so let's jump right into it here i'm going to start with number one which we have marked right here which says filtration. So when I talk about filtration, everybody's gonna have different understanding of filtration. What I wanna talk about with this is more pre-filtration. This is gonna have a skimmer system. So the skimmer is designed to sit on the outside end of the feature. It's gonna have a submersible pump inside of it. You could have an external pump if you want with a suction line coming out of it. But for most of our projects and for the one here at Michigan Gardener, we are gonna have a submersible pump. It's not gonna be sitting down in the bottom of the pond. It's gonna be located in a skimmer system. The reason we're going to do that is once that pump is located down in here and we have it marked out as recirculation system, when that pump is turned on, it's going to draw water into the volute. The volute is on the end of the pump, has an opening inch and a half or so in diameter. It's going to draw water in because there's an impeller inside that's going to spin around really, really fast, creates a low pressure zone, and it just draws all that water inside of it. So then once we have that happening, it's going to pressurize the water. It's then going to start pushing the water into the piping system. So once the water leaves our pump over here, which is this, this big red blob, the water is going to go through up a pumping system and it's going to come out through this pipe. The check valve is a one-way valve, so it has like a flapper valve inside of it so water can only go in one way. If the pump were to turn off, that valve is going to slam shut and it's going to keep all the water in the pipe. The reason why that's important is because all of this water is getting pumped all the way around the perimeter it's gonna go into the biological filter. If we didn't have that check valve in place, you have a power outage, you turn the pond off for maintenance, I don't know what, but if you were to turn off the pump and you didn't have that check valve in place, all the water from the biological filter is gonna backflow backwards through the system. The biological filter has bacteria, it has microorganisms and things living inside that are breaking down organic compounds in the filtering system. This is their home. They have their little home inside of there. The only time I back flush that is during cleaning processes. So if you were to back flush it, all those microorganisms, all the sediments and solids and stuff like that are gonna flow backwards through the piping system and they're gonna enter right back into the pond. It's gonna turn the pond black. It could potentially harm fish because those microorganisms, that black water, the pump is off, you could have a lot of aerobic activity happening. So all these little animals are going to be released into the system. They're going to start consuming oxygen. The pump is turned off. You could potentially have a dissolved oxygen crash. It is rare, but it can happen. So that little check valve, that one little device will get rid of all those problems. It'll keep the water inside the biological filter, which is important because the biological 
filter needs to be kept wet. So once it's full of water, it'll last for 24 hours, sometimes more than that, depending upon water temperatures. But that water will keep all those organisms living until the pump could be turned back on. The other reason why I have the pump inside of that skimmer, when the pump is operational, it's going to draw water in. So it's going to create a suction along the surface of the pond. So that means any leaf debris, any stuff falling inside of the pond will get drawn into an easy to clean removable basket. So now you just pull the basket out, all your debris is captured inside of there. Again, the reason why this is important, if you were to let that debris saturate, so just leaves, lawn clippings, uneaten fish food, etc. If you were to leave that stuff sit by itself on the surface of the pond, it's going to become saturated. It's going to sink down to the bottom of the pond. It will become food for fish and things like that. They might start grazing on it, but that material is going to start to build up on the bottom. It's going to start to decompose. It's going to release nutrients that are stored inside of that leaf, inside of the uneaten fish food, inside of the lawn clippings, etc. These are organic compounds. They're going to start to break down and release nutrients into the water. When that happens, you could have water quality issues. So by just putting in that skimmer system, houses your pump on the outside, captures debris. Also, all that debris is going to go into an easy to clean catch basket. You can go in, you can maintain things, etc. The other important piece with a skimmer system is it's drawing water in off of the surface of the pond. So because it's drawing in that surface water, it's capturing the debris, but the water that's in contact with the atmosphere has the highest amount of dissolved oxygen. So that means the water on the surface has the highest dissolved oxygen content in the entire ecosystem. This becomes more and more critical because I already mentioned this biological filter over here is home to microorganisms. Those microorganisms are aerobic. That means they need oxygen. The oxygen they need is in the form of dissolved oxygen, which is in the water column itself. So when you have fish waste, when you have things breaking down inside of the feature, they need dissolved oxygen to properly oxidize all those organic compounds. If you don't have high enough dissolved oxygen, you're going to have an incomplete degradation process. The oxidation process is not going to be complete. That means you're going to have sludge and debris and stuff like that building up in the bottom of the pond as well as inside of the biological filter. That's the other reason for that skimmer. If you had a limited budget and if you're going to only install one thing on your feature, I would definitely invest in a skimmer system because it has multiple things that it will address. So we're going to start out, we're going to remove everything that he has and we're going to put the skimmer in place a brand new rubber liner. So you can see I have the liner marked out over here. We're gonna use a geotextile material. This is a padding that goes on top of the excavation. The reason we're using that material is it spreads the weight out over a bigger area, so it makes it more structurally sound. But it also, that material allows gases and moisture to escape from underneath the liner. Now, a lot of people don't think about that stuff, but when you put a rubber membrane on top of the ground, and if it's down in a low area, it stops water from going up and down through that soil column, it also blocks gas transfer. So by having this impermeable barrier on top of the soil, if gases come up, if moisture comes up, it will hit that layer of geotextile. It'll pull it to the outside perimeters where it could go up into the atmosphere. On top of the geotextile, we're going to use our EPDM membrane. The EPDM membrane designed to last for 20 years from degradation, could handle UV radiation, very, very tough and durable. You could seam it together. It also conforms to excavations. A lot of great things about using it. So what we're gonna have is a series of shelves inside of the pond. We will go down approximately 24, maybe 30 inches deep. That is gonna be more than enough to keep the fish alive throughout the winter months. But by having the shelves, it gives us different elevations for different types of plants. When we're installing this feature, we will have different types of vegetation. Remember, Luke is an avid gardener. So by having different zones inside of the water column, he could have deeper sections for water lilies. He could have shallower areas for a wide variety of aquatic marginal plants. And I know he's talking about doing some really cool stuff with edible plants as well. So by having all these different types of aquatic vegetation, it is good 
good for the overall environment. So that little zone right here along the perimeter of the pond where the water meets the land, it's known as a riparian habitat. This is a highly diverse habitat. More species of plants and animals will live in and around that zone than any other type of habitat on planet Earth. So it is gonna draw animals in. If you're an animal lover, if you're a plant lover, water gardens are the thing for you because it's going to open you up to a completely new world and i tell you what it is really unbelievable like i said in my zoom call with luke we talked about aquatic plants we talked about edible plants we talked about decorative ones so we want to make sure we have these different levels set up for him and i'll be able to customize that once we get on the job site the other thing that we're going to do once we excavate everything out i want to make sure these ledges are not too big because I'm gonna be covering them up with stone. So just like right here in my drawing, you can see I have boulders on the vertical walls. So if I have a huge vertical wall, that means I'm either stacking a bunch of smaller rocks on top of each other, or I'm placing big rocks in position to kind of disguise that vertical wall because river rock will not stay on those vertical walls. River rock is important for another reason. That's gonna cover all these flat shelves going around the outside perimeter. The river rock, because it's smaller, it's gonna have a higher surface area. So if you were to measure the surface area of individual pieces of gravel, you're gonna find the surface area is very high compared to a big boulder for its given weight. So this is a very important idea here. So by having that higher surface area along the bottom of the pond, that means it's gonna be home to microorganisms. Literally every square millimeter of gravel will is a surface that wants to be covered with life. So once we put in a water feature, we are creating a habitat and things want to live in and around it. So I'm going to add beneficial microorganisms. I'm going to add bacterias and things like that into the pond. They're going to create a biofilm around that gravel system. They'll also have biofilm on the aquatic plants, on the logs, on the bigger boulders, but the river rock has a higher surface area to weight ratio. This is important because I wanna have as much space as possible for all these little animals to live because they're known as the recyclers. Recycling is very, very important inside of an ecosystem because when you add fish, when you have turtles, when you have frogs, when you have any type of life, when you have a hyena pond, which is the one we just completed at the Toronto Zoo, when you have an alligator like we did for Camp Kennan, there is waste that is generated by these animals. By having a home for microorganisms, they will be able to effectively process and break down all of that waste. Nature is actually a perfect machine. Waste from one animal is food for another. So all we need to do is set up the proper environment for these little animals. All the copepods, the rotifers, the tardigrades, all the bacterias, and you know, when we start getting down to the microscopic level that are actually gonna break down and process that stuff, and they're gonna turn it into a usable food source for the aquatic plants that I just talked about. They're going to break it down into the basic elements of nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus, etc. So you do have a plan. Yes, science! These are organic compounds that are basically fertilizer for the water lilies, for the irises, for the watercress, for all that stuff that we're going to plant inside of the pond. And all of that stuff grows basically organically. We're not adding fertilizer into the system. We are recycling the waste from the animals breaking it down, turning it into a usable food source for all that lush aquatic plants. So this is a really, really cool, unique system that we are gonna be designing and building for Luke as well as all of our different customers, which I think this is a very, very important lesson. So by having the rock and the gravel, we're creating the substrate. By having the fish, they're gonna go inside, they're going to feed off of the microorganisms. They're gonna feed off of the copepods and the rotifers and all those little animals that are recycling. When you watch koi fish down inside of a pond. They are a bottom feeder by design. Their mouth is located on the bottom. It's a ventrally located mouth. They have those little barbel structures on the side so they could actually seek out little nematodes and worms and stuff like that. They're gonna pick up mouthfuls of gravel, they spin it around inside of their mouth and they spit it out. But when they're doing that, they're sucking the stuff off of the gravel. So they're actually an important part because they're actually eating the recyclers, but then the recyclers repopulate really, really quickly. So those fish are responsible for feeding off of that stuff. Their waste product 
feeds the recyclers and then it goes back through the system and then the waste is going to feed the plants etc so this system when it's designed properly will give you many many years of enjoyment and it's going to give you incredible results i've actually seen plants growing much larger than they normally would inside these ecosystem ponds because of the symbiotic relationship, because of that, that interface between the rock and the gravel and all those little organisms inside, the plants do incredibly well. So as we keep moving things along, I'm gonna go over here to our biological filter. I touched briefly on that. So we have our fast moving water coming in from our, our skimmer system, posits the water directly into the biological filter. There's a swirl chamber down on the bottom. It's gonna deposit sediments. Those sediments are gonna settle out on the bottom. Then the water is gonna flow up through the biological media. That bio media, basically, it's gonna be a mixture of like a foam filter pad. Then on top of that, we're gonna use bio balls. This is a high surface area, extruded plastic item. The water is gonna flow up through all that different media, which is home. It's gonna be teeming with life. So all those little organisms living inside the filter are gonna to help to detoxify the water along with all the stuff inside of the pond. As you can see here, the outfall of the biofilter is a waterfall, which is why we named it a biofalls. It's a biological filter combined with a waterfall unit. The reason why I love this, biomedia inside of there is gonna suck oxygen out of the water. Like I said a little bit earlier, it's highly aerobic environment. So as they're drawing the dissolved oxygen down, we're gonna replenish it with the action of the waterfall. This is why this system is a incredible system and it works very, very efficiently. Water comes in on the skimmer side, goes through the pipe, comes through the biological filter, re-enters the pond, and then it completes the cycle. Now, ideally, we have a skimmer on one side, biofilter as far away as possible, so that way we have efficient turnover of the entire ecosystem. I know this is a lot of stuff to understand and digest. I will be talking about each one of these individual parts while we're on the job site so you could see exactly what these pieces and parts are gonna look like once it's installed and you'll be able to see the results that we have at the end because I have a step-by-step -step process that I'm gonna follow on this project as well as every single project that you watch me design and build. All right, guys, appreciate you for watching on this one. Stay tuned as we go to Michigan Gardener and design a brand new, fully functioning aquascape ecosystem. We'll see you soon.